Hey there guys, Pajama Prepper here and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to program your Radio Shack Pro 651 digital trunking scanner using the Radio Shack <clears throat> software and the data provided from Radio Reference. I'm going to be walking you through every step as well as a whole bunch of other things and then in another video I will show you the scanner and what to expect to see with the scanner because there's two steps to this. <coughs> so first and foremost once you get the software with the programming cable from Radio Shack, don't let it go to waste because once your demo runs out and expires, which it's not very long, it's like three or four times that you can do this and then it's done, you then need to go and buy the license key from Radio Reference by clicking Purchase Scanner Software. <clears throat> and then you also have to get a membership to Radio Reference, so that's in total like 69 bucks, or so no, it's $40 the license key and then another like 20 something bucks for the membership so uh, make sure that if you're gonna buy a scanner either get one that's you know on sale like I did and um, yeah so what you're gonna do is from the drop down menu you can select whatever select the Pro 651 cause that's what I have I'm gonna click start software what that's gonna do is it's going to bring you to <clears throat> a screen that says GRE slash RS object programmer now in the screen, I'm going to walk you through everything here, from top to bottom. Okay, uh, you have file, which you can add objects and do all the stuff here. You can import or export your saved files, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, edit, no, all that stuff there. View, you can you know uh, auto resize column widths, customize view, all this stuff. Options, you can, it even gives you a rebranding calculator or rebanding, excuse me, calculator. You can move scanlets, clear selected lines, and do all that stuff there. Setup sets it to default data. Internet, this is, um, I'll show you that in a minute, because this is what you're going to need to do if you have nothing yet in any of this object browser. Scanner here gives you the options to download the data from the scanner to the computer software or upload from the software to the scanner. You can do a backup restore utility and then virtual control of your scanner. And then also uh, vScanner editor. And then you have help because sometimes you need help. <laughs> and you can check for updates and stuff through that as well. <clears throat> and you get the manual. Uh, then over here you have open, save, cut, copy, paste, cut line, copy line, paste line, add object, fill, clean, duplicate, or excuse me, find duplicates. So if you put duplicates it up, you find it and erase them. Default, up, down, um, radio reference import link download upload that's the same thing the same thing over here F5 and F6 just got other buttons here and then virtual control of the scanner now over here we have object browser what this has is essentially what you have in your memory <clears throat> now if I were to uh, open a file that I have with all the information that's on my scanner currently which is this one PR 61 program 2 I'm gonna open that and what it does is it loads in and it shows that I have 500 conventional frequencies and then uh, three trunk systems with 188 talk groups of those trunk systems in with a total of 691 frequencies and uh, or items and uh, objects, items, whatever. And it takes up 38% of the memory on the scanner. Now, you can browse through these, you know, the conventional bands, the talk groups for trunking systems and all that by clicking over here underneath scannable objects you'll see conventional talk groups limit search service search spectrum sweeper and then you'll see trunk system objects and all that uh, and then here we have a bunch of stuff it looks like a Microsoft Excel Excel spreadsheet and it has uh, uh, it's a CNV conventional and you have frequency the alpha tag which is you know the name of the uh, town or you know what the frequency is like this one one five five nine nine two five is Woodbury uh, town or the town of Woodbury gets regular frequency and then you have 46.56 which is Woodbury ambulance you know uh, 460 6375 is Woodbridge fire departments uh, scene 3 and all that and then uh, it has the scan list that it's on uh, and then the squelch mode so like you have CTCSS you know P25 trunking all that stuff there uh, and then you have squelch code which is essentially like the the tone itself and, you know the input and then you have you, here you can choose stuff like you can lock out the frequency by double clicking it selects off on you can you know hit delete and it clears the cell priority you can do this to set the channel to priority 
LED mode. This is the LED that blinks in the top of the scanner. You can select solid or flash from a drop down menu and you uh, double click on that. Now let's say you wanted to switch everything from solid to flash. What you're going to do is on the top, set, uh, top row click flash. You're going to then click LED mode at the top here. Then you're going to right click it and click fill down and everything changes to flash. But I don't want everything to flash. I want everything at uh, solid except for a couple frequencies. So there is solid. Now here's LED color. Uh, for right now, everything except for several frequencies are set to red. Uh, Litchfield County Dispatch and Winstead PD and Fire are set to blue and light blue. And also my trunk uh, systems are set to, um, I believe, green. Yeah, it's green. Uh, and then you can, you know, do all the stuff, delay, attenuate, or all the stuff, the alarm, backlight, uh, the backlight can come on when the frequency comes on, which actually, I gotta actually do that, because, uh, and then by double-clicking it, uh, let's see, gotta again do up here, turn it on, and this is actually good, because if you don't, if you set it to off, or you don't set the backlight at all, what's gonna happen is during the nighttime, a frequency is going to come in and you won't see the screen and you'll have to look for the button and turn the backlight on manually. And that can drain the battery a lot faster than if it's off or just turns on when uh, the uh, signal comes in, you know, whatever. And the alarm, I don't mess with any of this. Skywarn, I don't know what any of this stuff is. And again, none of these are Skywarn chan channels. So uh, the mode, auto, you can scroll over here and, you know, all, all this other stuff, audio boost and stuff, you know. So don't mess with it unless you know what it is. I don't, or if you don't need to mess with it, don't mess with it. Uh, if we look at uh, talk groups here, you can see I have the LED colors all set to, oh, it's yellow, not green, yellow. Uh, and again, it shows the same thing, the alpha tag, the talk group ID, the trunk system, talk type group, priority, the LED color backlight, I got to set that to on again. Uh, again, we're going to do this in fill down. And then, uh, okay. So now, what you can also do is go to scan list preview. And this essentially, again, uh, I have my scan list, which are essentially the banks, uh, organized according to county. So bank number one, which is my default bank, is Litchfield County. Then New Haven County is bank two. Tallinn County, Connecticut, bank three. And Berkshire, Masses County, uh, in bank number four. And then any other banks that I would put in here would be in bank number, uh, Five through twenty, and then if I want to add any to my favorites, I could just add that to Bank Twenty One, or then Skywarn Channels, Bank Twenty Two. So anything like amateur radio wise, I could add there. Again, I have my other radio for that. Uh, now here are the global settings. This is where you can change the welcome message. Like I have mine that says "Welcome to KC One CWP's Digital Trunking." I'm gonna say it to uh, Scanner, and I'm gonna center that text. Uh, Excuse me, you can set the contrast, the light mode, light area to both or just the LCD and keys or, you know, I'm going to select it. I just, I really don't use the keys that much after it's programmed except for uh, manual and I switch to WX every once in a while. And this is how it'll blink. Like you can set this to different, you know, ways by moving the thing. You can do that and then set the set it so it blinks at different rates or whatever you know so that's just LCD blinking the LCD screen if you had the screen set to blink that's how it would blink in the LED that's how the LED would blink uh, so I have that set that way I don't do the LCD blink because that's just annoying when you're trying to read it especially when you're driving and then here is where you can fine-tune the colors you know by adding you know uh, hue or, you know red green you can change the values of it and all that um, then you can go to scan list here. This is where you would rename your scan list, like Litchfield County, and then you can turn them on or off. Um, default scan list is scan list number one. Quick text, I don't even really mess with that too much. Uh, weather, you can set your specific area message encoding to whatever you need to do. Just going to clear that. Priority, you can select your priority channels. Uh, interval for it to do, and then W, weather priority. I have my weather priority set to one one six two five zero zero. Miscellaneous. You choose your battery type. If you use like nickel metal hydride, alkaline, or nickel cadmium. Uh, low battery alert interval and charge time. And then this is other stuff like uh, attenuation mode, global attenuator, uh, enable hit counters, tune the LED, and all this other stuff that I don't really mess with so much. 
and allow 5 kilohertz from 138 to 174 megahertz. Again, I have to look into the manual to see all this stuff, like the uh, expert. Don't mess with this, because this is stuff like if you don't know what you're doing, you might screw something up really bad. You know, like um, some of this, you know, like weather check interval, I like guess 60 seconds or something. Uh, RF squelch fade, squelch weight, you know, stuff like that. And then software, you can do that. Uh, so once you, once you put in what you need to do, uh, you're going to need to get your programming cable. And you're going to uh, free up a USB port. <laughs> and you're going to plug in your programming cable. And then uh, you got to make sure you use the Radio Shack programming cable. Don't use just like a regular uh, speaker connector looking one. And then you're going to plug the other end of it into uh, the uh, PC interface connector on your scanner. And then once you have everything that how you want it, you're going to turn on your scanner. Make sure, again, make sure your antenna is connected to it. Um, and what you're going to do is go to upload. Again, this is how you upload to the scanner. It's going to. That's connected to safely. Um, and then I'm going to select the USB, keep turbo load on, and then start upload. And what's going to happen is. Um, I don't think that's actually, hold on, that wasn't on there properly, hold on. I'm going to turn off all the, all the bands so it doesn't, uh, uh, yeah, it doesn't scan or anything, that'll interrupt it. So start upload, and what's going to happen is, it should... Oh, you know what it's doing? It's going to the wrong USB port. Hold on. <laughs> That's a problem. It's uh, it's sending it to the wrong uh, USB. USB 3, it's going to be number 9. Yep, and so what's going to happen, once you select the right USB port, the data cable has a little light that's going to blink, uh, and then you're going to see PC interface file systems, and then it's going to have a percentage that says complete, and then if you hit F1 on the scanner, it'll cancel. Uh, so it's going to take a little bit of time depending on how much data you have to upload or whatever. Right now I'm at a 70%. It usually takes 25 to 40 seconds depending on... Uh, it says if you use the Radio Shack cable, do not use mono stereo conversion cable. And then it's going to beep once it's all done. And uh, then it's going to restart and uh, start scanning again. Uh, so I'm going to turn off all the bands that I'm not using... On 74, you're going to be on uh, Prisoner Watch. It's LCP, yep. Copy that. That's right, so picking up turned in. So that's, on Prisoner Watch. that's how it works. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, put them in the uh, comment section below. I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, and if you need any other help, again, feel free to message me, comment. And I hope you like this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great night, and uh, God bless America.